All right, listen, we have, uh, next up is Andrea LeVere. She's going to do, she is literally world famous for doing this. She does a wrap up of, the, of, a, of the, the themes that she heard and some ideas about next steps and a challenge to the audience. You're in for a treat. We're going to make it kind of brief, uh, five minutes or so. And then I'm really encouraging you to come down. It's, it's a, been a rough afternoon. Uh, talking about some depressing things. You need a glass of wine. So please join us on the first floor for our reception uh, that will happen in just a few minutes. So thank you all again for, for staying with us. Thank you. I am shocked to see all the people who are left. So let me be absolutely transparent when I start. I was born in Brooklyn. In Flatbush, just so you know. Um, and uh, so I just felt I had to be absolutely upfront with that identity uh, before I could go forward, all right? So as David said, let me begin with how we began. And let me just recognize that we are in a room that has brain power that is more valuable than all the gold that is in the vault on which floor is the vault? In the basement, all right? And I also want to underscore, uh, which both Rosa and David did, that this is already a community. And this is a community that is working in many, many different ways to radically improve health by making sure all of our communities are opportunity rich. So that was a vision that was shared in the beginning, which we found echoed throughout the afternoon. And our opening speakers said, we are confident that we can do it. And that was also, I think, said clearly by our closing speakers. And if we can do it in the Bronx, which is the poorest community in the state, we can do it everywhere else. As long as we are pairing our understanding that wealth inequality and health inequality are the same things. So then where did we go? We went first to New Jersey. Who remembers the line, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, Google it up in time because I was so busy taking notes, from Hamilton about New Jersey? Who remembers that line? That it's a joke and that every, somebody back there, what's the line from Hamilton about New Jersey? Right, everything's illegal in New Jersey, right? I had to say, because we began there, so just to know that maybe the partnership that worked in New Jersey isn't quite possible everywhere else. Maybe Wayne will tell us that. But basically, uh, we began with a partnership with the CDFI, a health system that serves two-thirds of the residents of New Jersey and a financial institution, one of the largest in the country, with a very innovative strategy to invest in CDFIs. They began fundamentally as we heard from our fabulous speaker with the phrase we used at Prosperity Now all the time, which is nothing about us without us. You begin fundamentally with that intelligence and that insights. And then we go to solve the real problem, which we heard again and again. And that real problem was actually student turnover in the local schools that was driven by housing and job insecurity. And I want to add to this, uh, we've done a lot of work with the Tacoma Housing Authority. Some of you may know it. It's, in my view, the most innovative housing authority in America. No uh, criticisms of the housing authority here. That basically had a student turnover of over 100% every year. What did the housing authority do? They took 50 families. They guaranteed them permanent housing for five years if their kids went to school every single day they read to those kids every night, they participated in the PTA, and they engaged the school board in creating an international baccalaureate program at that school. That school, in one year, was turned around significantly. That reminded me exactly of what was happening in New Jersey. They spoke in New Jersey about the partnership being grounded in trust, and shared values, that theme was echoed a thousand times. It's not just money. And the success depended on more than money. 
And then the same theme came up that came up in every panel, that local solutions, because nothing about us without us, must be paired with systems change. The other great insight from this session is every partnership is different, but the vision is the same. So how you put the pieces together can vary, but we need to go towards the same shared vision. And then we're trying to change the ocean, but as we heard, everybody just brings one bucket. And when we bring that one bucket, we can change the ocean. But I think the other critical thing that came out of this panel was that you can't just stay in New Jersey. You have to raise up the fact that these examples are happening everywhere else. One of the phrases that I, that I always like to use is that no is simply the response to the unexpected, right? So that's why the hospital people, the CFO doesn't want to do something, right? Because it's never been done before. So we tell them how it was done in Brooklyn and suddenly they want to do it in New Jersey, right? I love how when I'm in New York, my New York accent really comes out when I haven't <laughs> lived in New York since I was 18. So then we move to the anchor institutions. And the core message we heard from each of our institutions is we have to use the resources of the entire enterprise to create healthy students, patients, and communities. The outcomes we have today, and I can quote Tyler again, are the result of what we have been doing all along and really not to make the systems change, which we heard about in the first session, is unethical, is a moral dilemma that we all face. But it's also a leadership challenge, and it is also a business challenge. The phrase, the deaths of despair, will stay with me, but hopefully it's because of the work that we have that we can change it. That panel said, we already have scale. I mean, the numbers that each of the panelists described, a half, uh, you know, 500,000 students, a budget of $7 billion, land, the ability to change how SNAP is used, the ability to bring food, all of those things, plus we heard again and again, CDFIs who are positioned to create the on-ramps between these institutions and the communities in which they are so that the anchors and the communities can work together. And then we ended up with the challenge, let's pay for what produces health, but capture the savings to fuel the sustainability of the business model that we all have. So then we move to the Bronx, and I'll begin really with the quote from our leader from the Bronx. It's not that I work in the Bronx, but I live in the Bronx. And that's really the story of that conversation. We are a community of feast and famine. We are 62 out of 62 counties. We understand that economic development begins at conception and that health is a driver throughout life. And as Gary reminded us, dignity must be at the heart of all we do to change this. So what were all the strategies that we heard? We heard about workforce development, job placement, employment strategies. We, we heard a fabulous story about clean energy. I'm gonna come back to that, Danielle. And air quality improvement, we heard about financial innovation and community engagement to fuel investments without displacement. We heard about cross-sectoral approaches to healthy food. And we heard about the ultimate trusted partner, libraries. The ultimate trusted partner. And how they are a source of community with healthcare resources, education resources, social workers, all of whom build the assets of those communities. And then we heard about systems change. Incredibly eloquent comments by Antony about how do we restructure power? This was echoed by many. 
in terms of who controls the resources and how they are allocated in communities. We heard about the imperative to create a movement with a health wealth network. We heard about how we need to leverage capital resources through the CDFIs to fund cross-sector investments. And then we heard that there's so much economic waste in the health and energy sectors that it's a way to create a billion dollar business. So let me quote my friend David Erickson, who very recently in a convening I hosted said, as people were talking incrementally about change, what we are doing now is stupid and expensive, which is really what we heard, right? So we must get smarter and more efficient. And basically, as um, our moderator said, interrupt the vicious cycles. Then we heard from Joe uh, that we need to aggregate capital to fund community development at scale with metrics that improve help, health. Let me say that CRA is really not gonna be the way. I won't go into why, but having just spent three years, I'll tell you, I like the bigger picture. So let's close with the question that Don posed which is, what is the real work we are trying to accomplish? That is what you told us very clearly over the last several hours. One of the phrases he talked about is being a culture that values equity. One of my favorite phrases when I was uh, running an organization was, culture, eat strategy for lunch. So, and other people say it's breakfast, but I like lunch better, it goes better. <laughs> but what that means is our ability to change the rules, whether it's the rules of how we evaluate risk in the financial markets, how we invest in the ways we do, who has power to allocate, requires both that we work as a movement, but we also understand profoundly what problem we are trying to solve. And that is, I think, what we identified today. So thank you. Now you know, now you know why uh, Andrea is world famous. That was a, a tour de force. Thank you so much for that, Andrea. So uh, please come on, head towards the elevators. We're gonna, there'll be Federal Reserve staff that'll direct you to the express elevators going to the first floor and we'll see you downstairs. Thanks again.